Welcome to What is Next. What is Next is a very educative program on GTV, the authentic and trusted voice of Ghana. What is Next seeks to ask questions about contemporary challenges confronting us as a people. But in the process, we look for people who in our own estimation are people with accumulated wisdom people who are thought leaders of our country at the moment. And we just uh, allow them to help us answer such uh, 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 challenges, questions confronting us. And today on What Is Next, I have a man of many parts, a former uh, chief of staff of this country. He is also a former senior uh, consultant for the United Nations when it comes to political or democratic transitions. He is somebody uh, I will want to concern. Many people who may, may agree with me, a highly regarded uh, by the United Nations as one of the best brains uh, when it comes to matters of democratic transition. I'm talking about Nana Ato Dazi. Nana, welcome to What is Next. Thank you. And we are so grateful you've made time yes. to be with us. Thank you. Nana, please, is it fair to assert that democratic stability requires credible political transition? Yes, thank you very much. Um, so for That's a very deep question. Democratic stability. And this, this understand that you I mean uh, you work in democracy, but you hope that you can stretch it out. It will it will be stable, uh, peaceful, and um, it will endure. Uh, I think that the only way to create an enduring political stability or stable state is to ensure that the ends, the end cocks are properly handled. We talk about the political transition. You see, the, the political transition, oh, sorry, democratic uh, process itself um, is underpinned in our we know constitution by uh, multi-partyism. The assumption is that there won't be one party state. Our constitution bans that because of our own history. So the democratic process that we are engaging involves multi-parties. So multi-parties involved in this enterprise is intended that at a point in time, you know, there may be a change. Now, what happens when there's a change? How do you translate the party that was in opposition into the uh, party uh, that was in government? In Ghana, we've had about seven changes or so, democratic changes, and um, um, uh, uh, elections, sorry, seven elections, and about three changes. How do you transit from one government to another if you don't handle that carefully there'll be a slip and it can be chaotic we can drive that but it can be so dangerous for the state that the state may even disappear so for me as i said democratic stability it's underpinned by, you know, a very solid transition arrangement. Yeah, and, uh, and with what you just told me, the relationship between democratic uh, transition and uh, democratic survival, it seems to me whenever we are close to election, our attention, our investment, is even though we talk about peace before, during, and after election, but when you look at in practice when you look at our air force our investment and our efforts are into before during 
we seem not to do much about uh, 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 political transition. I, I don't know if my observation is right. Yeah, yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. Indeed, it's, it's not only Ghana. It's a phenomenon that's uh, dominated largely the, 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 the our new world, you know. Um, um, pursuant to the third democratic order, as we say, um, many countries suddenly in the 60s, you know, had independence thrown at them, you know, because of the post-World War II disengagement exercises and all that. The world has changed. In 1960 alone, I believe more than 60 African countries or something like that became independent, you know. And these people haven't ruled themselves before. They haven't been in governance in an ordinary by a public arrangement that we know today, ever, that all of a sudden, you know, is thrown at them. How do they transit? It's a very difficult uh, situation. And um, um, like I said, all over the world, it's a, particularly in, the, in, the, in Africa, it's a phenomenon that it's, um, uh, uh, it's gained. After the independence, power was given to those, the big, you know, men who fought for the independence, as it were, Kwame Nkrumah, Nyerere, you know, Naza and all that. They you know, took over the run. But they ran largely one party systems until we came to a point in which, you know, there's a lot of opposition, dissent and all that. And um, today we are... Uh, we, we've had this military, you know, intervention as an alternative to um, opposition because a lot of the opposition was driven down, you know, by the, the one-party system. The military guys come and they were no, no better anyway because, because they were not organized, you get me? So soon corruption and all not, and there's a change in all over Africa, in various countries. Now, in the 80s, after the uh, uh, Soviet Union is uh, broken up, our world also changed. Our world changed. And, you know, the West that took over, you know, kind of pushed the idea that we must have democratic governance. As a, you know, a, a, a meter for meeting, you know, uh, IMF, World Bank, and other you know, uh, uh, dispensation, you get me? So we started, largely, this uh, uh, the democratic uh, multi-partyism. But that's where it is. We didn't know much about what's happening. And suddenly, you come into power. Before you say, just four years, then you have to be possibly handing over. How do you do that? That is really the question. We don't prepare. We've not been preparing for the transition. Largely because our leaders never expect to leave office. <laughs> so I see you smile. <laughs> no, you know, no, our leaders all over Africa, you know, uh, uh, we know that there's a tenure, but uh, that's really the irony because um, when you go into contests, political contests like any, you either win or you lose. Maybe in football, you can have a draw. But in political contests, you either win or lose. But you seem to suggest that that political psychology that I'm going to election, I want to win, but I may win or I may lose. And like what I'm hearing you, you are saying that when we are getting ourselves or our People are getting themselves ready. The mindset is, I will win. It is a very, it's a very critical point that you say. And so you can't have democracy without Democrats. You understand? Democracy without, without, without Democrats. You know. I, I, I want to hear more. About well, that. well, well, well. That's the point I'm making. I'm trying to just uh, taking off from what you're saying. That you see, we must have people who have democratic credentials. People who understand the name of the game, actually, that look, you are elected by the people. 
you represent the people for a tenure, a time will come, you will leave office. Somebody else will take over and continue, whether from within your own party or outside your own party. You understand? If you have that mindset that well, we'll do two years and I'm out. Um, Professor Ali Mazuri made a statement, an astounding statement that Mr. John Rawlings, for instance, you know, started as a maximum you know, Democrat, ended up you know, the greatest, uh, 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 one of the maxi maximum despots, <laughs> ended up one of the greatest Democrats. That's what he's better than I was saying. Because at least when the time was happening, he started. Viewers, this is what is next. And I'm in conversation with Nana Tudasi. And he is saying that we cannot practice democracy without Democrat. What it means is that those who are contesting political power must work within the principles. What it means, among other things, is that they must have the mindset that when you go into contest, you may win or lose, and you psych yourself up for the outcome. It should not be a win at all costs. No, you may win, we may, you may lose. And if we want to function under democracy, we must ourselves be democrat. Nana, this issue you have just raised is both inter and intra. I have seen it between two different political parties. But it's also within the family that when individual political parties are doing internal politics, primaries, you must win or lose. The people must accept you or may have reason to reject you. And that has also not uh, shown signs of Democrats that people turn up to Mebodria, people fight, fathers also be, go independent and all that. I don't know what that also means. Well, well, the, the, the uh, I agree. I, I agree still have you. political transition yeah. in mind well, that, that you represented, represented us in parliament, parliament and that people get to a point and say, no, no, we don't want you. We want somebody else. You need to transfer power. But it's that has also been very smooth. Yes. Um, what, what I would say is it's also part of the, the growing groans, you know, the, the pain of uh, democratic growth for us. We're still very young without democracy. I mean, most African countries covering around 20, 30 years in, in democratic order. You look at the USA, you talk about 350 or 300 years or something like that, you know, democratic process. They've gone through all these challenges. In, in, the, in the in UK, they've cut heads. You know, with the Keynes, you know, had some, and all that. It's been a problem, growth. We don't have to go through that, you get me. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that the, the, what we see at the national level, it's also true, even in intra, intra uh, party. Um, the examples even inter party can be a lot more painful. You get me? It's, it's also a question of selecting the best candidate to represent the party. That's all, as against the other side. And the extent to which people commit, I read some horrendous things about, you know, a, a, you know, uh, a member or somebody was uh, running, you know, putting out some, as many as 250 bicycles. Hey, where do you get that kind of money from? <laughs> and then when you lose, you say, oh, I want to collect all my bicycles. <laughs> you got me. And then there's, you know, uh, Hula Balu. It's our cross board. All the parties, we have to work towards a deeper a democratic, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, principles. Um, they've, they've, the constitution, as I said, indicated that the parties themselves must be run on democratic lines. You know, uh, why do you run a democracy? The wish of the people to be diluted by the wealth of individuals within the party. 
or the threats you know executed by another member using macho men and whatnot to storm a place you get me uh, it's, it's 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 a real problem and the winner takes all type of multi-party politics in our country seem also to fuel the humiliation of the losers and of course uh, you know the exuberant attitude of of the victors that's our current constitution itself a challenge to smooth political transition it is it is it is, it is. Uh, i mean the you see the winner takes all um uh, concept uh, pushes us to a flat level where the winner takes everything the loser take, uh, gets nothing you see uh, what it actually translates to is that the socio-economic um, uh, circumstances of the winner, whether uh, the parliamentary or national, you know, presidential or whatnot, suddenly, by our system, translated over, bloated, he acquires the right to grant all the contracts, you know, whether in oil, whatnot, you know, building, everything. And the winner, the winner gets uh, nothing, you understand? That's it. That's that's basically what it is, and um, uh, it is it is this that is creating the tension out there. You know, it is this that is creating the tension. But Ghana's peaceful elections have been built on trust and accountability. However. Our political transitions have also served as serious triggers of political violence. Yes. Yes. The the I think I think it basically is because um, our our system, the the system that we are operating today, like as I said, most African countries, is novel. It's new to us. You see. And uh, we, we don't know, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a good grasp of, you know, what it is, you know, the democratic process, you know, what, what it goes through. You know, all that we know is that we have to go and vote and somebody is elected. But it's a lot more. It's a question of responsibility, you know, and uh, what do you call it, giving power to people. You know, people must be accountable. How can you elect a leader? And... People will be arrested for asking the leader to account to them. I mean, it, it, it's, it's an unacceptable you know, position, you understand. When you talk about the wealth of a nation, you are talking about a common wealth of the people. So do we elect people to feed on the common wealth, you know, in opposition or as against everybody else. Look at me. How do you spread that wealth around? How do you spread that wealth around? Look at me. You can see somebody who is you know, just uh, two years out of university, he's suddenly a district chief executive, uh, he's riding a four by four, he's, uh, and it's, it's, uh, the, 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 uh, the balancing doesn't uh, work well. You see, somebody would have worked 40 years. He doesn't have this kind of largesse. You get me? So I, 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 I think that we must have a way of curbing, curbing the excesses which, you know, we've introduced or permitted to, you know, um, come in as a result of the winner takes all. You know, in some countries, you know, prime ministers and whatnot, they ride bicycle. I, I don't know. I don't know a minister who will be riding a bicycle in this country. That'd be... Uh, and, um, <laughs> well... Hmm. But Ghana, Ghana has witnessed relatively peaceful political transition. Yes. Compared to uh, other countries in the sub region. But it's also true that our political transitions have created bad blood, name calling, defamations, and you have seen these things before because you have seen transition uh, in Ghana and other uh, 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 countries. Now, now, why that? Well, well, I'm saying political transition uh, for us in Ghana as well as in Africa is relatively new. Uh, 
uh, novel, is that we want to put it. And um, we moved into this, you know, uncharted seas as well, you know, trying to hand over. In the year 2001, there had never been a real, you know, a change of government to the ballot box from one government to the other ever since we left you know we attained independence 2001 i was chief of staff we went to election hoping to win we went into the bush campaign we came back into our car the results were called we had lost the next thing was you should hand over power what does that mean how do you do it you know what's the process the other side, like you're saying, they were bristling with, you know, you know, enthusiasm. They say, well, have power, you know, you know, hand over the cars, hand over the... I mean, we were simply not prepared. We didn't have institutions which were organized to deal with transition. You understand? There were no individuals who had been, or public officers who had been trained or groomed to even, you know, deal with the issues. So we had to do deal with the issues as best as we could. Get me? We set up a joint transition team happily at the time. And then they we went into subcommittees. I happened to be on the same committee with now President Gufadu and others, you know. They were demanding that we hand over as fast as possible. We we we, we, were, we were find it difficult because we hadn't really organized ourselves. Because we didn't expect to lose. <laughs> They probably didn't expect to win. <laughs> Look at me. Because it's, uh, uh, and at, the, at the back of it at the time was, was Rawlings prepared to hand over or not hand over. So it was a tense situation for all of us. And um, uh, thank God we managed to go through. But you see, in the process, there's a lot of bad blood. You know, name calling and mass slinging. And, you know, I was, as chief of staff, I was supposed to have, uh, you know, you know, uh, exported 600 cars, you know, towards uh, Ivory Coast. I mean, the country, the public service at the time didn't even have 200 cars. <laughs> but in the newspapers, on the radio, you know, I'm a human being. I felt it. You stolen medals, you know, gold medals, which you imported into the country. I had to ask my assistant before he would tell me that, oh, those medals, they keep them in the vault in the Bank of Ghana. So it's still there. But yeah, 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 but there's a lot of accusations and whatnot. But they are all symptomatic of the fact that we didn't have systems, institutions, organizations to assist us in delivering the transition. Now, now I'll come back to these uh, uh, systems because now we have a uh, presidential or transition act. But the name calling has not changed. You know, Rawlings to President Kufo, Kufo to Professor Atamels, Atamels uh, to Dr. Mahama, you know, you still have, any time we're having transition stolen cars, you hear it, headline news, and before and the end, you don't see the stolen cars. You hear so and so has taken this. Is it a political strategy to for people to just establish themselves, get to the mind of the people that we are ready, we are on them. Why, why do we do that? Because you, you have seen it how many times and you say you have been affected. Why would somebody do that, that you have taken say 600 uh, cars, knowing that maybe at that time even Ghana we could not afford, but somebody would do that. And I don't think the situation has changed. Well, why do we do that? Well, I think, I think that um uh, how do you say uh, doom and gloom? I think we should left it. The, the I think it will, will do a lot better as we go along. Uh, just that the kind of uh, stumble that we face with uh, within the last three years, four years, probably is uh, needless. You know, why do I say this? Before um, two thousand and eight, uh, uh, we were caught up in this. The NDC had to hand over power in 2001. Uh, the NPP had to hand over power in 2009, 2008, 2009. Now, we found out that 
the complaints that the NDC made in terms of the attacks and on his people and all that, you know, on his personnel by the incoming government and after, you know, the trials and political prosecution and whatnot, were literally showing themselves up in 2009. Then if you look at the uh, complaint list from NDC and NPP, 2001, 2009, you'll be amazed. They're almost the same. The two sets were just complaining the same. So um, the, the, I, uh, the political parties, actually, the Ghana political parties came together and said, we can't continue this way. They formed uh, what they had, the Ghana political uh, party platform. And they engaged consultants, you know, Mr. Kwamla, or Dr. Kennedy, others, a PV of him, to you know, look at what, what was wrong, what's wrong? What's the, why is our politics so acrimonious? You get me? Uh, IEA jump in, Jemensa, Madame Jemensa's establishment at the time. All of us eventually uh, were pulled on board. Uh, Justice VCRAC crab myself, and um, um, uh, Professor Kwam Lahoy were tasked to put, up, put the final document together. We did work, and um, it was placed before the, the, the parties endorsed it at various seminars and whatnot. And Parliament, you know, uh, as well passed the law. Um, now, getting that law into, into signed was a, a real big problem. Because you see, when you write um, a transition law, first of all, it's like sending a message to the world that I'm ready to go. <laughs> you got me? So, um, governments are generally, you know, not uh, reluctant to, to uh, look at that at all. So, they are not, they are not documents you want to look at, like, like your will. You know, your nephew comes to say, Uncle, uh, about your will, uh, <laughs> you tell the uh, mother, your, your son is a very bad boy. Very bad boy. He wants me to die. Yeah. So he's asking whether I've written my will. You know, it's a good, healthy thing. But quickly, there's, uh, the point I want to make is that at the end of the day, um, 2012, we um, were able to secure um, the assent from Professor Atamels, you know, gladly sign it. And uh, incidentally, a couple of months after, he passed. But it was so rapid that the law was there, they are not sufficiently uh, gained currency that w w the ensuing election, you see, we had to use the, the law, the Presidential Transition Act, as a background framework, you know, under which it was worked out. Now, in the next election, this is 2016, there was opportunity to now use, you know, the, the template, the political transition template, to address the issues of transition. And also, for, I'm telling you that because of the existence of, you know, the, the presidential transition law, that created a framework for delivering the transition. That transition was particularly smooth and um, uh, just too exciting. I mean, in four days, six days, it was over, you know. And there was the uh, former president, uh, Mahama, who held um, Mr. Uh, um, Nana Kufadu's son to come and sit down, addressing the, what do you call it, the transition team, and it worked so flawlessly. And the whole world um, really uh, applauded Ghana, it became a model for Africa. Probably the reason why Sobov TV had the opportunity of serving outside to share experiences. Three years after that, four years after that, we seem to have some incredible, you know, you know, uh, challenges largely arising out of what would appear to be an incomplete transition arising from the 2016. A lot of the issues that we've seen when chasing cars, there's an establishment for, you know, under the Transition Act, you know, that's the Administrator General's office. They must have an inventory, you know, a register of national assets. So, 
if the car is given to a minister, it is that establishment that must chase, not some vigilante, not some party, you know, uh, what do you call it, a foot soldier, who chases it. Things must be regulated or have to be regulated. We must go according to the rules. But like I say, I think that probably uh, um, one, we are yet to internalize those democratic principles, you see, and allow institutions to grow and not try to use force and whatnot to, to, to destroy what is uh, the little that's been gained. And, um, uh, also, I think that um, we, we ourselves may, may show that democratic, like I said, the democratic uh, what do you call it? credibility, you know, that says, no, don't do this. This is this establishment that must do this. And that. And if the party, somebody goes across or they misbehaves, you pull back. Get me? So what I'm saying, the, the, the guidelines are there. It shouldn't, what is happening today shouldn't be happening after 2016. You know. So I think maybe there will be the need to call around, to get the parties back to the, the drawing board to, to discuss the way, to do a reflection, the way forward. I want you to look straight into this camera and call for that meeting because it's not been the best. The name calling, the defamation, we are going to an election. And I will still go back to your earlier submission that we cannot have democracy without Democrat. You go into election, you may win, you may lose. But the mindset must be whether I win or the people, I'll get the sovereignty, you know, the people will vote for me or not. I'm a Democrat, I will accept. And therefore, the national conversation for us to continue uh, the transitional arrangement uh, that you are raising, please talk to my viewers. We may not yes. know who is watching us. Yes, uh, um, as of I'm saying, uh, it is important that when in every, the, the, the life of every nation, when you come to uh, a, a certain point, you stop and you reflect. If we, what we are seeing is anything to go by, then the next five months can be turbulent. I think that's not the way we want to go. I think the parties must come around. We should have men of goodwill who should be able to pull the parties, pull them around. It should be possible for former presidents to be coming together, reflecting, find out, are we satisfied with what is happening? Former ministers and what we share experiences, you understand? And um, I mean, what people must understand is that no position is permanent in a political game of this type. No position is permanent. You see, for today, you may be in power, you may be throwing your weight about exercising, what not. In four years, you may not. in eight years, maybe there's a point of accountability in the modern governance system, you see. That's the last thing is about, you know, a democratic uh, accountability. It is very important. And I think that at this stage, we should be able, on the quiet, to get leaders of thought, you know, in the nation, to say, no, we drop our political, you know, um, affiliation. And then look at the problem. After all, Israel, Israel and um, Palestinians, they will run 40 years or so fighting but nobody knew that apparently there was a quiet meeting you know quiet meetings regular meetings in is in norway or somewhere there you know between them to the two sides to families themselves to try to disengage try to reduce the tension you know because the ordinary man in the street simply wants to be able to any skip have you know go back home and sleep in quiet that's all get me and uh I'm saying that we, 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 uh, a ban that ne a a kramaka akwada. The elders have an obligation to come together or call meetings. I mean, the 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 the, 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 the religious leaders they can take the lead. You know, it happened. Actually, it happened in 19. I believe 1992. We had a very challenging situation like that. The, 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 the churches, you know, the union, they pull together, 
you know, uh, uh, Mr. Darocha and all of everybody, we went together, went under uh, at, at the Black Star Square. So what is the future? Reverend Stevens, you know, Bishop Stevens at the time, a big meeting to reflect on the country, to look at the future, get me? I remember that there was uh, that meeting where Mr. Uh, um, uh, the, 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 the MPP team at the time said the elections had been, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, stolen. And it was a very strong uh, movement towards, what do you call it, um, uh, taking another uh, position. But where Mr. Darocha said, no, I tried this. One man, he said, no. No, I have always remember him for that. Then he said, you let them run their term, we'll come back. Hmm. Eight years later, I was sitting in a Ministry of Information office when the results were coming in and we had lost. I remembered Mr. Darucha. Viewers, this is what is next. And I'm in conversation with Nana Ato Dazi, a former Chief of Staff and a senior consultant for the United Nations on Democratic Transition. And he is calling for a continuation of the national conversation on political transition. That these are at the attitude that after especially elections and we have to change government the name calling the defamation character assassination i will not go away if we don't work on it and he, that is why he's calling that there's a need for us maybe quietly uh former presidents and former ministers of states and religious leaders let's come back to that because even though we have a presidential, a transitional uh, uh, act, we have not been able to overcome, if you like, that demon. And I hope and pray that somebody will hear this call and act upon it. And I want to quote a statement you've made somewhere some years ago. It has been attributed to you that records of post-election violence in Africa tend to indicate that majority revolve around transition issues arising from absent novelty, paucity of administrative, institutional, and legal framework for managing transition. Do you still stand by that statement? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I think um, this is basically the analysis some of us, you know, um, did, and we are very clear in our own minds that, you see, there are minimum of five pillars you know, during transition you see uh, one you must have a, a, what do you call it um, a legal framework you get me you must have administrative setup that will back it you must have an administrator you you, you, you understand we must also even have one i discovered myself you know some kind of what term an hourglass uh, syndrome and this, these are things which are very important for us. You know, the, the timing, uh, if you don't address the transition along these lines, you will run into trouble. Because um, the, like over the period, the administrator takes over the, the transition issues. The establishment, the institution manages it. You get me? There's a legal framework as to what to do, what not to do. Can a president, for instance, come into power and say, I'm not going to use the, the, the vehicles, the planes, the whatnot that my predecessor used, or this chief executive? President Trump has the biggest hotel, he has the biggest uh, plane, but he's compelled to use the White House. But that is the system. You understand? Now, this uh, is how are we transitional law is 1963. The U.S. transitional. Uh, how are we building the capacity of all those involved, whether into the legal framework, administrative? Even earlier on, you mentioned uh, Reverend Stevens. Yes. How are we building the capacities of you know the five pillars and even others so that a day will come? You keep mentioning the 1963 yes. law of U.S. Yes. A day must come that Ghana can also quote our law. And tell a better story. How are we yes, building that yes, capacity? Uh, uh, a law, a law is a, uh, a law. A law is only good when it is known and understood 
uh, it's only good and understood by the people and they, they, they activate it you understand they put it into action but um, uh, where do we stand how many people know this law how many uh, organizations the CSOs you know, even the churches and whatnot. I think it's a question of education. Mm. Education, education. Mm, and education. We need to educate our people. But for now, we are coming to the an election. Yes. In the last not the five months and whatnot. Mm. What is the state of our preparation, transition preparation? Mm. You get me? In the US, six months before election, presidential election, all the establishments, the institutions of state have to submit their handing over notes. Mm. That is, they are ready. So that, you know, mm. a new person comes and he goes into the administrator general, mm. who is an independent person. So the new president doesn't have to go to the former president and demand, where is this, <laughs> where is that, where is that. If you have any question, you direct it, you know. In Ghana, we, we, we have it, a similar law. But we say one month before, uh, what do you call it, election, Political, uh, what do you call it? The uh, handed over news should be uh, uh, submitted. For instance, we should go and find out what is the state of the Administrator General's office today. I remember some two years back when I went there to do some consultation. They said, oh, we, yeah, we don't have a car, we have to deliver. You know, because we don't know and understand and appreciate the worth of the Administrator General or the worth of transition. How to manage transition is a bridge. That bridge that we have to, that comes in, that we have to move from here to there, at the end of it is uh, stability. If you don't handle the work, like uh, the way the engineers build a bridge, they span it longer mm -hmm. than the river so that you cross safely. And the transition bridges are very necessary, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, measures that we must make sure we do. Indeed, they are as important as the election. Mm. But until recently, when some of us also started making a lot of noise about transition, you know, it was thought that, oh, let's say, observers come into a country, they oversee the, the uh, what do you call it, the elections, they, they pro pronounce it free and fair, and that's it. Mm. And they walk away. Mm. As they walk away, you know, people, you know, they, but the, the parties, you know, enter into their local issues. And uh, before we say Jack, there's violence, there's a rejection. In Gambia, I was in Gambia, as they saw UN consultant. It was very interesting where the president, Yaya Jame, in December 1st, accepted defeat yeah. publicly. Mm. Five days later or so, he said he, he, he recanted. He, I've changed my mind. <laughs> and it led to a standoff. I could make a world of very expensive business. You know, the UN, uh, 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 you know, and all that. You know, I could uh, uh, ensure that he, he, he took a, you know, a safe leave into, uh, what do you call it, Equatorial Guinea. Uh, okay, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. the country continued uh, safely under the newly elected president. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that uh, transition, for me, transition is as important as the election itself. Mm. And even as we battle over the how to uh, deliver, you know, free and fair election, we must also ensure that we deliver in a safe, healthy, what do you call it, um, uh, transition, you know. And um, it is only that that we can be talking about stability. President Trump, in his election statement, you know, acceptance, the, 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 you know, the acceptance statement, made a fantastic statement. And almost every president says, is that in 200 years, every four years, we, on the people of the U.S., will go through this process of transition, which is really you know, like the jewel, mm. you know, that the underpinning, you know, uh, factor for safe, uh, stable governance. Mm. And so without it, uh, we just turn everyone. Because the rules are there, yeah. you know. They are, there's, a, there's an institution that is uh, monitoring it. There's somebody 
who is accountable to parliament, probably, who's overseeing it. He has power to go into the presidency, the president's house, the president's private house, to take an inventory of assets. Those are some of the powers that the administrator general has. But, um, uh, have we built the capacity yeah. for our administrator general to dare go into a district chief executive's <laughs> office? So things are, we have, a, a, like I said, the, the, the national assets duly invested in the computer. So at any point in time, we know how many cars we have, how many uh, uh, aeroplanes we have, and whatnot, and the handing over process is actually from the Administrator General to the incoming government. How it, it lessens the area of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Nana, uh, maybe in 30 seconds, you have made a very important statement that uh, elections are as important as the transition. Yes. But when we are into election, we find civil society groups, traditional leaders, in fact, our revered traditional leaders. Yes. There have been instances that peace accords have been signed yes. in the presence of people like Asante Hene and many more. Yes. But you don't see that when it comes to transition. Now, how do we get such institutions of calm to participate in the transitional uh, 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 processes. Yes, uh, I, I, I think it's, it's important to understand that education is a key uh, factor to the growth of democracy. In the US, the Transition Act 1963 has been amended more than 10 times to reflect experiences that, you know, they've gained from previous transition. You know, mm. from 1963. Mm. You know, each time to enhance transition. Each time so, to make a better transition. You understand? Know, now, the, I think the 2012 or so, or 2015 amendment, for instance, says that the documents, the transition document, should be digitized and published, made mm. public. Mm. You know, that's what, so that people can access and read it. But here, yeah, everything is uh, classified. You understand? But you are ruling people. You know, so that education that is necessary. The churches, the religious establishments, the CSOs, and what we must be part of the transition. I think that is what. Uh, so there's a need for greater advocacy. Mm. For the, the need for greater advocacy. Viewers, this is what is next. And I have been in conversation with Nana Ato Dazi on democratic transition and sustainable democracy. And he is saying that when you talk about transitions, it's like somebody preparing a whale. Now, it doesn't mean you are going to die tomorrow, but you must still do it. Most often, you have leaders, when it comes to discussion on transition, the impression is, do you think I'm going to lose the election or not? I'm not ready. But we must, because if we need post-election peace, and something we must, peace before, during, and after, the triggers, of violence in post-election. Among other things is how we transit power from uh, one institution or individual to others. He has called for a national conversation. It could be in the quiet for us to continue the presidential act, a discussion that may help all of us. It's like the post-election uh, name-calling defamation have not also been very helpful. My name is Kabno Puni from Pong. I come your way same time next week, God willing. Until then, may God bless our homeland Ghana. <laughs>